2045, a tsunami of meteorites swarmed Earth, killing most life forms. Civilization came to an end. The survivors from around the world fought their way to a small landmass in Asia, Tokyo, Japan. Those who survived the meteorite's hellstorm in Tokyo, and some survivors who were able to land on Tokyo, killed each other for more food, more power. But for those who survived the meteorites in Civil War, their true enemy wasn't a dystopian world run by a fascist shogun. It was Fujinaga shogunate government's designated infectious disease, Anorak Syndrome. Undergo a metamorphosis into horrific meteorite beasts. People call them Anorak. Anorak hunt and kill human beings for their life force. Anorak are the true enemy of humankind. was the trailer for lion girl available right now head to the store pick it up blu-ray digital it's everywhere it's your boy kuya p this is nerds rule the world and as you see on the screen i'm so excited so delighted to have the director kurando mitsutake uh i hope i didn't brutalize your name no that uh, was perfect pronunciation thank you so much for having me on it is a pleasure sir thank you uh we as i said to you earlier uh, I'm super excited to check out this film. This is right up my alley as a filmmaker myself. Uh, I do a lot of industrials <laughs> and uh, I live in the DC area and and uh, a lot of documentaries. Uh, but this is a film after my own heart. You know, I, I grew up on just wild creativity and, and uh, I, I love what this is. Uh, I love comic books and I know this was, you know, based off of, uh, you know, some, so I, I don't know if it's manga or, or what we call it in Japan. I'm uh, if I if I'm if I'm saying the incorrect term, but how this was based off of Go Nagai uh, and that kind of genre specific stuff. Um, Karando, thank you for your time. H how did this, you know, project set a life bob up in your head that you know we're living in crazy COVID times? Right. Uh, I, I want to do this wild film. Uh, tell tell me how it got started and how you put pen to pad or fingers to keyboard. Sure. Uh, well, you know, Mr. Nagai, Mr. Go Nagai is a living legend of manga world, uh, you know, Japanese comic book uh, world. And, uh, you know, I've been a fan of his work since I was in fourth grade, you know, like all my life. Uh, I, I loved all his uh, works, you know, like uh, uh, Devil Man, Violence Jack, Majinger Z. Uh, you know, he's a little bit more popular. He's actually household name in France and uh, Spain and other European countries. But, uh, uh, you know, his his notoriety is not that high here in North America. But, uh, you know, he's he's super famous, of course, in Japan and throughout Asia. Um, you know, but some of his stuff has, you know, penetrated American market as well. But, uh, um, you know, I got this... Uh, opportunity to team up with the Toei Video uh, Company. Uh, and, uh, you know, th this, this is essentially my first uh, studio movie. I'm be, I'm, I've been working on the uh, indie side of uh, Japanese cinema uh, and, you know, world cinema, really. And uh, But uh, so the Toei Video actually, you know, gave me the opportunity to work with them. You know, they wanted to produce something of mine. Um, and mutually, we came up with uh, Mr. Nagai's name, like, you know, like, they their company have a great relationship with Mr. Nagai's production company, and I've been lifelong fan of his. So you know we wanted to approach to him and his company, saying, "Hey, could we adapt uh, any of your work to you know to a live action film?" And uh, um, I guess Mr. Nagai had seen one of my movie called Samurai Avenger, and somehow that movie 
inspired him actually to come up with this uh, new character called Lion Girl. That is and, awesome. Uh, yeah, so Lion Girl actually is not based on any previously published work. Uh, he actually created this character and, uh, you know, just a few, few lines, uh, story points uh, for the movie. And basically he gave us this character and the freedom to, uh, to adapt it into a movie. So that's how, uh, th that's the birth of Lion Girl. What an honor. That's like, uh, I'm an American comic book guy. Like Stan Lee was like my God, Jack sure. Kirby, you know, Marvel comics, you know, that, that is just, wow. So I'm sure your mind was blown. Okay. You oh yeah. We, we all freaked out, you know, when, uh, when, uh, Toei video producers received, uh, uh you know, the, his original character design uh through their fax machine they freaked out they contacted me contacted me immediately and said oh my god we have this like brand new never seen before character from go nagai you know i mean that so that was like that knocked open so many doors in the studio and before you know it we got the green light for the live action movie Absolutely amazing. Okay, so you're bestowed this honor, right? So now you want to live up to this God that, you know, Go Nagai, you know, entrusted in you. I'm, right. This is the character I have for you. Now you got to, you know, you got to do it. You got to, you got you to gotta live up to, to, to the requirement. Sure. Um, so, so what was that like <laughs> brainstorming? How long did it take you? Uh, did oh, you man. like go, did you like mine like past projects or did you already have like maybe a template of just being a fan for so many years? You know, this, you know, I set off to uh, do this movie saying, I'm going to make a love letter to Mr. Nagai, you know, because I've been, you know, a lifelong fan of his. So it, throughout Lion Girl, it has so many, you know, little homage or little hats, you know, hats off to his work, you know, like all his famous uh, quotes from Devil Man, Violence Jack, you know, all those things are in there, you know, his uh, giant robot uh, famous. Uh, comic book called Mazinger Z, uh, you know, like that, that um, comic book actually has half man, half woman uh, villain in it uh, called the uh, Baron Ashra. And uh, I paid the homage to that character in my movie with the character named Devil Gemini, who is basically half woman, half man. Um, so, you know, like throughout the movie, I sprinkled my love towards Mr. Nagai's work. And, um, um, but, uh, you know, when I was uh, uh, when the storylines, the story synopsis finally got greenlit by uh, uh, Toei, the studio and Mr. Nagai's company and Nagai, Mr. Nagai himself, uh, you know, it was time for me to start working on a, a script that was back in, you know, um, 2020, uh, spring of 2020, I believe. Um, then <clears throat> as I was getting ready to write the script. A pandemic happened, you know, and um, we were in uh, we were in a lockdown, you know, and, uh, you know, not not only we were in, uh, you know, lockdown with the once in the century pandemic, uh, we were living in Trump America, you know, so like, you know, I mean, when 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 the world is ending in front of you yeah. uh, for real. Uh, how do you keep your focus on your fictional apocalypse? You know, that was the that was the Mission Impossible, you know. And uh, so I was like, I had the hardest time. I mean, I was depressed. I was really like, I had no idea what was going to happen. You know, uh, I mean, I was I didn't even know if the days of us going out with the friends for a beer or whatever would come back or not. You know, I mean, I was pretty devastated, but uh um, so I decided to just kind of interject what I was going through during the uh, during the pandemic into the script. So, you know, the, the 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 monster in the movie are called Anorak. They're the they're the disease with the uh, you know this meteor ray uh, meteorite uh, rays that you know has the the, the the this disease virus in it, and uh, so you know people turn into these uh, soul sucking monsters called Anorak, but the Anorak is Corona spelled backwards. So <laughs> you know, uh, so it, it essentially, this this movie is uh, uh, is about the personal uh, feelings during uh, COVID a pandemic, uh, disguised as genre movie. So 
if you can, you know, get the little hidden messages in the movie. You know, it's it's kind of like I, you know, I, I really admire works of, you know, Paul Verhoeven, uh, you know, Total Recall, Robocop. So I kind of, you know, I kind of adapted his sensibility of using the genre uh, work and to put little personal, uh, you know, political satire or something like that throughout the movie. You know, I think when you watch the movie, uh, you get that jive. Toronto, that is brilliant. I love it. Uh, you just delighted me in so many ways um, as a creative as well. Like, uh, I, man, I, I, I com completely understand where you're coming from storyline wise, story wise, and just life in general uh, as a creative. I felt very much the same. That's why I'm now talking to you. I push myself more to just do this when I couldn't create. I want to highlight filmmakers that I adore and appreciate because I think we need to su support each other in this industry because of the highs and lows. Uh, well, so I just, uh, I adore that, Karando. That's amazing. Um, so you, you you get this script together uh, and then you're going to get this crazy cast together, but in COVID times. Uh, I filmed a couple projects with Netflix and I just know how wild that was uh, just, to, just to keep people healthy and, you know, and to create, to create just, film in this time of covid right um you, you got a brilliant cast together tell me you know casting this group uh, of amazing actors tori griffith damian raven uh, and my friend derek mears uh who uh regaled me on his stories of getting involved with this wild project uh tell me about casting uh this project of line girl you know they say like 80 percent of directors work is done when you can gather a good cast you know and that's that's you know partially true and uh, again, you know, uh, it was tough, you know, because the production got started as as uh, as the Omicron outbreak was, you know, coming on, and so it was really tough, you know. I mean, we had to spend so many, so many, mo so much money uh, onto the uh, COVID safety protocol, you know, uh, following SAG union, uh, you know, health guideline and stuff. Um, I mean, you know, as a filmmaker. It's uh, it's it, it's it's really hard to see chunk of change going towards something behind the scene that's not going to be reflected on the screen, you know. So that was that was hard, but uh, you know it was something we had to do to uh, you know during the time of COVID, and we did it. And uh, thank God, you know, like no one got sick. I mean, we we were such a small, ultra low budget production. If anyone got sick and production got shut down. I don't think we could have you know reopened in a week or two. You know what I mean? So like we were like we're always on the edge of our seats. You know, like making sure that everybody stays healthy. But you know, every, everybody, including our young crews and young actors, they were so disciplined that they didn't party on the days off. And uh, I'm sure they were exhausted with the, our 12 hour a day shoot schedule, so they couldn't really go out and party on the days off. But uh, uh, so everybody behaved and everybody stayed healthy and we got through the production. But uh, uh, casting was also tricky because at that time, I think, you know, certain percentage of uh, actors workforce wasn't uh, weren't back on 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 working, you know, like they, they didn't. Um, so the audition pool was smaller, I would say, you know, like if uh, if you actually put the casting notice on this this caliber of a feature you'll be flooded with the submission usually. But uh, we were flooded with the submissions, but not as much as we uh, we were expecting. You know, like, it, so the, the, it, was, it, was, it was an emergency time. But uh, um, before, you know, uh, leading role, like, you know, Lion Girl, we got so much, so many submissions. Um, we I think we got at least like 500 video submissions. Wow. And, um, you know, I went through them and... Uh, you know, uh, found Tori Griffith. You know, she's the she's the force of nature. She's she's she was perfect lion girl, and she committed to the picture. You know, one thousand percent, and uh, she she just shines um, as the leading role. And Damien, of course, is amazing sidekick uh, for Lion Girl, and uh, um, you know Derek Mears, of course. You know, like uh, amazing Hollywood actor. Um, you know, um, we, 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 in, in the, 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 you know, the scale of our movie couldn't really afford Derek Mears, but, um, we became friends, um, you know, through attending different uh, fan conventions around the world. And, uh, 
you know, we became really good friends. We were same age. Uh, I went to high school in Fresno, California, and he went to high school in Bakersfield, uh, California, you know, just like a half hour apart, you know, uh, central California, you know, like, a, you know, part of the California, no one wants to live. Um, <laughs> but but uh, uh, so we became, you know, quick friends. And when the script was done, um, you know, he wanted to read it. And uh, uh, later I found out that the, he's actually a huge fan of Japanese pop culture and anime and stuff like that. So he was curious that I was, you know, working with Go Nagai. And uh, so he read the script and he he actually really loved it. And he's like, hey, Kuranda, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm playing your villain. So let me call my agent and uh, I'm going to tell them I'm going to take the scale, SAG scale. And, you know, I, I don't want them to book me another job. I'm going to do this movie for you. And uh, both Derek and his uh, his wife, Jenny, uh, Jenny actually plays uh, a bad guy, bad person in, in the movie as well. So this was actually the first time Jenny and Derek together in the movie, you know, husband and wife. But uh, um, they both helped me and this picture so much, uh, both in front of the camera and the behind the camera. And I'm, I'm forever grateful for their contribution. You know, like everybody says oh, during the interview and stuff, oh, so-and-so is the best person in hollywood you know he's he or she is the kindest and you know big heart and you know there he or she is the best person usually that's a lip service usually that's bullshit you know but i have to say and i'm gonna swear this on my mother uh derek mears is the best person in business i mean he's just an amazing person you know and uh he uh he really contrib contributed to this picture so much. I mean, when you see the movie, um, you be you be really impressed with how uh, how great of a, a, a actor he is. You know, without without the mask and everything. You know, like he's famous for being new Jason and the Swamp Thing and stuff like that. So he usually wears a lot of makeup and suits and stuff like that. But uh, I'm so proud to have you know no mask, unmasked. Uh, Derek Mears in my movie, and he plays amazing villain. And I think uh, I think you really enjoy his performance. Definitely, I I have to shout out to you and tell you again in regards to Derek, real quick. Shout out to you, Derek, if you're watching this. I know you were going to check it out too when I talked about this. Um, it's what people say when you're not in the room, and I completely agree with you. I've been covering entertainment and been in the business over 20 plus years. I, I know you've been in the business as well. Um, it's what people say when you're not around, and and you can tell the fakes from from the real people. And uh, Derek is a real one. And uh, yeah, he was telling, he just was it, with excitement uh, as we talked about Lion Girl when I saw him at Monster Mania. Um, it was beautiful. And you, you'll just love to see that. And so you can tell, you know, when it's good vibes and everything. Um, so again, no more talk about Derek. We don't, you got to come on here and talk <laughs> with us, Derek. Um, but uh, Corando, uh, again, uh, I, I love that. And I love hearing stuff like that. And uh, so you put together this beautiful crew. You're shooting this project. Um uh, but it's also just a very niche, wild film. You know, you and I are fans of, you know, this kind of content and material. But uh, you, you got Derek, who is a fan. But bringing in, like, you know, Tori and Damien, were they aware of, like, what they're getting into? When you kind of describe, like, hey, to get their homework done. You know, they, you know, you get cast for a project. But sometimes right. you don't know exactly what you're stepping in. So, like, did you give them any kind of homework? And what was that experience like bringing them into this kind of wild, crazy world to, you know, right. doing the work? Well, they they loved the script uh, right off the bat. You know that that was the reason why they wanted to commit to the project. And uh, you know, I mean, you know, Tori's character, you know, uh, you know, following the uh, Go Nagai's world, you know, like he's a he's a equal opportunity offender as a you know comic book artist. I mean, his both male characters and female characters they all get naked in his his comic book world. You know, I mean, he's famous for drawing this amazingly beautiful naked bodies both male and female and uh um so of course the script had a lot of description of you know nude scenes and stuff like that and just but to tori loved the script she she understood the uh, uh, hidden messages um you know this is the commentary about the pandemic and all that so she committed to everything you know just one thousand percent and uh um, you know, we both, you know, Tori, Damien and I, you know, we we uh, we shared uh, some of uh, Mr. Nagai's comic books. So 
they understand the world and stuff like that. So, you know, we had the lengthy character development talks and, you know, um, visits and stuff like that. And we created the, um, you know, the, the, the characters together and they understood uh, the world of Gonagai that we we're trying to recreate live action and that they, they were, you know, so committed and that it, it was, it was such a amazing collaboration time. We, we all had together. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So let's get into production, if you don't mind. And again, let me remind everybody, Lion Girl is available everywhere right now. Go pick up the Blu-ray, the DVD, or check it out on digital if you don't want to get out the house. Uh, it's everywhere. Check it out. It's amazing. Um, Thank you. I I've only seen the trailer, and I'm talking to Karanda right now. I can't wait to see it. And I've just heard so many good things, especially from Derek Mears. Shout out again to Derek. Yeah. <laughs> um, in production, right? So you have this wild thing that you're trying to recreate and give love and show you respect to to uh, Gona guy because he gave you all this blessing, created this special character. Um, but it's wild. It, it's out there and making this a reality. Um, was there was there were you able to do everything that you wanted to do? I'm kind of curious in regards to that aspect, you know, of recreating this wild world. Um, but we're living in COVID times, you know, limited budget, spend, having to put money because on the COVID stuff, you know, so, you know, maybe you had to pull back, you know, uh, here's my whole filmmaker hat on that. I know, you know, full well, when you do want to do so many things, but you get limited because of time and, uh, and, and opportunity and, and, you know, the budget, uh, were you able to do everything? Was there anything that you wanted to uh, put in that you couldn't, uh, what was that like in the actual well, process? You know, like... I guess, you know, as a filmmaker, you know this too, but the, you, you're you never satisfied, you know, like, you know, coming out of a project. You, you you never say, I was able to do everything I wanted to do, you know? And of course, that's the case for Lion Girl too. Um, yeah, and also, you know, like, uh, just, uh, you know, co after COVID, post-COVID, inflation in LA, um, inflation in the industry, it just, you know, like, I thought I could do so much more with our budget because this was the biggest budget I had so far. You know, I've done six features. This is sixth feature for me, and this was the biggest budget. So I thought I could do pretty much do everything I wanted to, but, the, you know, I was really wrong. And uh, um, one of the things that I had to sacrifice was um, a lot of intense action scenes, you know, like because it requires the rehearsal and it requires the... Uh, uh, you know, the safety stuff and stuff like that. So I would have liked to put more action scenes in the movie, but, uh, you know, some of them are, uh, you know, got, gotten a little shorter, you know, gotten a little compact, but, uh, uh, but, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a first installment of a he hero movie too. So you do have a lot of expositions, you know, so, um, you know, so a fair share of the screen time I have to spend on this, you know, explaining the world and, uh, uh, you know, with the budget and schedule restrictions, um, shrunk down the action a little bit. So, you know, it's, it's not as action packed as I would like it to be, but, uh, it is still action packed and still it has all the genre movie, you know, uh, greatness that you want to see from any, you know, ex uh, exploitation or the genre movie. And I think uh, Lion Girl has them, uh, but I wanted to do more. So I love that. And I love that you just said that. So I say all of that to say this again, throwing it back to Derek. He said he had a ball doing this, wants to do more. So uh, I guess Lion Girl too. So you, you you did this one, you know, I'm sure this is going to become a cult classic and a fave from everyone. I'm dying to watch it. Um, with all that work now, and we're slowly rising, you know, out of this pandemic times, um, are you inspired now? Having, like, done this first one for Toei, and and hopefully they've, like, love it, and, you know, and uh, hopefully more fans are going to check this out right now. Um, do you have ideas and visions? And, you know, you know, we, we got this one first one out the gate. And now if we just had a little bit more time to just really work things and do it like we really, really would like to, you know, uh, as a, a film creative, you know, do you have ideas or, or anything of where you'd like to go? Totally. I, I already have uh, pretty much like, you know, 80 percent of the sequel figured out. And uh, so, you know, like you said, you know, more people watch this, uh, you know, they, 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 you know, if this becomes a hit. Uh, we'll we'll get to do a sequel, and I would love to work with Tori, Damien, and Derek again. 
uh, you know, I would love to bring back a whole crew and cast and do the sequel. So, you know, like I love uh, first Superman with Christopher Reeve, you know, and uh, but I, I love the part two better, you know, with with the General Zod and everything. And uh, so hopefully if the Lion Girl, this Lion Girl is my Superman one. I would love to do Superman 2, you know, Lion Girl 2. So, um, yeah, now please please check this out and make it a hit so I can get to do the sequel. Everybody do that right now. <laughs> it's amazing, Carando. That's I love it. Um, this is such a joy. I can't wait to see it. And like I said, I'm going to hit you up once I watch it. And, uh, yeah, I I'm just super excited. But uh, I love hearing this. And uh, I love how you're inspired with certain things in the world and how you infuse that as well. And actually, I was thinking as I was talking to you um, as an Asian American uh, as well. Um, and you kind of like, you know, you had mentioned Trump's American, just everything, the pandemic times, you know, one of the big, big things that affected me as a creative during this time frame is just, you know, there was, we had to have a stop Asian hate movement because there was some racist evil people going on right now in the world. And I put a lot, I put some of that into some writing and uh, I haven't fully finished up some of that, my, that those, that screenplay work uh, on, you know, just kind of putting my anger in it. But at the same time, I don't know if I want to come fully with the anger. Uh, I, I I hope you don't mind if we go off on a slight tangent, but sure. I, I know you kind of put some of the, your, your your feelings with, you know, like you said, Corona, the the, the beast in this and, and uh, into the Lion Girl. Uh, does did does any of that affected you? And then as, you know, uh, as Asian filmmakers, we put ourselves into the work. I, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with this question, but... I know, like I said, I put it into uh, some writing that I was going to turn into a a full length screenplay, um, but it just inspired me to push myself. And now I'm talking to you uh, with with what I'm doing. Um, but uh, if you can just talk in regards to that, and just like how you to channel, you know, uh, as an a Asian American creative, you know, I, I got wanted to get into this industry so I could see more people like myself. Um, you know, Asia's doing it, but I want to get that Asian American experience. You know, as a Filipino, I want to have the Filipino experience going on. Um, but also, I just want to be able to create and not have to have stereotypical stuff in my stuff as well. You know, it's it's a hard job as a creative when you're of a certain descent. I'm sure you can relate to that. Uh, if if you can maybe speak to that, uh, I, I know I'm throwing a lot at you right now, but I love sure. that you channeled your feelings into this project, and I just think that's brilliant. Yeah, thank you. Uh. Yeah, I, you know, I, I mean, you know, it's based on Japanese comic books artist, you know, work. So it's naturally, uh, you know, Asian or the Japanese uh, themed. And, uh, you know, the, the main theme of the, uh, um, uh, you know, what, what one of the, the, the main subject in the movie is the Japanese uh, code of chivalry uh, for uh, Japanese Yakuza. You know, like when, when Japanese Yakuza came onto the scene, you know, centuries ago, they weren't just a, a crime syndicate. You know, they they actually, you know, like back in uh, feudal times, you know, like there was no, you know, the government was, you know, limited. So there was no policing on the countryside and stuff like that. So the, you know, like helpless farmers and stuff like that, or the business people, uh, in order for them to protect themselves, they needed the mob, you know, that the, so that the Yakuza's became the local um you know local like a watchman essentially and uh you know people would pay them money so that they can sustain and they they they'll be like protecting the villages and the towns and stuff like that and and you know they they started the gambling on the side and stuff like that so they kind of became the underworld people but um in the beginning of the birth of yakuza they were actually following this uh, code called uh, um uh ninkyo and it's basically you know, um, you know, you stand with the weak and uh, you you fight with the strong. You know, that was their their mentality. So, you know, that kind of Asian theme or the Japanese theme is definitely uh, full frontal in, in the movie. And, uh, um, you know, also, um, you know, be, the reflection of making this movie during the uh, um, Trump America, I was really conscious about um, doing the colorblind casting, you know, uh, like... Uh, you know, uh, Ken Shishikura, uh, the sidekick uh, Yakuza character, kind of a mentor to Lion Girl. Uh, you know, he's he's African American. You know, and but he's full on Japanese Yakuza. You know, and I, I never explain it, but I did 
so many colorblind casting like that in Iron Girl, and I'm I'm really proud of it. And it, I think um, it, it naturally works in this fantastic world. Dig it, dig it. Uh, I I appreciate that. I, I just representation means so much to me. Um, so that way we can inspire the next generation and, and, uh, sure. also, you know, what, what society is, has going on affects ourselves as creatives and we put it into our work and, uh, uh, man, I can't wait to watch this y'all again, everybody lying girl available right now, go check it out on digital, go get the Blu-ray digital, everything. Um, I'll be talking more about it once I watch it and I'll have my review and then hopefully we can get Corando back and, uh, our pal Derek, uh, on as well. Um, but even with other projects, Corando. You are amazing. It's an honor and a pleasure to speak with you. I, I would love to have you to back to chat. Hopefully more Lion Girl, but everything else as well. Um, sure. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Just have me back on uh, anytime you want to, and we'll have more chat. Thank you so much. This was uh, really fun. Thank you. Appreciate it. Everybody, Kurano Mitsutake, Lion Girl, available right now. Go check it out. I'm Kuya P. This is Nerds Rule the World. We are recording <clears throat> in a one, two, three.